So today is uh, officially seven days. I'm not doing a food review. I am not doing a food food review. I am not doing a food review. Um, yeah, that's it. So today marks officially seven days until um, quarantine ends. So I decided to go with Uber Eats instead. I just wanted a proper breakfast. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, toasted avocado, kale, um, poached eggs, um, uh, halloumi cheese, grilled tomato, salmon, caramel cappuccino, and uh, green energy punch. Seven days to go. Let's go. This came from Barista Sisters Coffee, which is literally just around the corner. And the food is warm. Everything is just warm. Which is nice. <laughs> Hasn't come cold. Yeah, so look, dinner came. As a matter of fact, I ain't even gonna open it because I ain't even gonna eat it. Um, I'm still full from breakfast. Um, obviously, there's the obligatory bread and butter but bread with no water um, ain't opening none of it ain't opening none of it okay well, this is what it is um, what is it? yeah so it's back to work <laughs> I've had the weekend weekend to take my time to work yeah it's been good to uh, get back in get back to working again um, get back to rereading um, writing fresh um, looking again at some of the stuff that I've had and some of the stuff that I want to actually realign and renew uh, refocus and, and put back out there um, so much more content is in my head so much um I'm putting on paper so many great people who are jumping into my corner to help focus me on what I'm doing. If COVID has taught me anything in this period, it really is partnership. The importance of partnership, the importance of community, that you don't have to do this on your own. You can and you should actually be working in partnership with other people who will know how to focus you and, and how to um, keep you committed in in. In a, in a focused and a directed way so truly grateful truly grateful listen big love to the man like Phil Yates man like Phil Yates he said listen what do I get you I said man just a few I, I said I'm, I'm listen just I don't know I don't know what to get me Phil so we put some Danish in there I said just a couple of chocolates Phil I ain't gonna eat this much chocolate but there's so much love in it. I'm gonna at least eat 16 of them. Um, dried mangoes is what I want. And some, just some fruit. All I wanted was some fruit, some bananas, and just mangoes in a bottle. Serious. Phil, you absolute. Listen, thank you. Thank you, brother. I'm get back to work now. friend it's a guy called Mr. Desmond Vincent I call him Father D and he calls me and says Father D he says Father Ed <laughs> when my wife has something that takes her by surprise what did she say Father D <laughs> I remember years ago D I called him up I just called him up to just have this belly aching just rant 
just rant. I was mad. I was vexed with what was going on in my life. I was vexed with my employer. I was vexed with, with, with my friends. I was vexed with just everything. And I just created this mountain of misery, misery up which I dragged my life past present, my life yet to be lived. <laughs> I just dragged it all up this mountain with me. Dragged it all up this mountain with me. And like a best friend does, he just listened, he never said nothing. He never said nothing, he never made no comment. He just let me go on. Huffle kafuffle, huffle kafuffle. But I suppose when he had heard as much as he was gonna hear, or as much as he felt, I needed to get off my chest like a best friend does. He just stopped me in my tracks and just gave me that reality check. And he said, you know, Ed, there are two stories that you can tell. He said, you could tell the story about the teeth in little black boy out of Fulham, West London, who grew up, um, who grew up, who was expelled from regular state school, from secondary school, never finished, was declared uneducatable in year seven, um, in year eight, you know, expelled in year nine, ended up in community home schools, went down through detention center, remand center, you know, and in his 20s, just went the way of everybody else during the 80s, just crime and violence and, and drugs, and ended up in jail, full stop. He said, you can tell that story, Ed. Or you could tell the other story of the teeth and little black boy from Fulham, West London, who everybody had written off, um, but who Grace had found when he was 17. And although even saved at 17 and, and walking away from that, um, during his 20s going crazy, and yeah, still expelled from school and still, um, just going the whole route that he went and then in his 20s ending up in jail at 25 just decided that no this was it yeah this was it that boy at 25 who heard God say to him listen although people have written you off I can write with a bigger pen I've got a bigger pen you want me to write into your life that same teething little black boy who went back into education at 25 just to do his high school equivalents and then went on to do a bachelor's degree and went on to do a master's degree, then went on to do another master's degree. He went on to be a husband, he went on to be a father, who went on to be a leader, who went on to be an author, who went on to, to, to be married for, for upteen years. He said, you could tell that story or you could tell the other story. He said, Ed, tell the story that counts. And I never forgot that. I never forgot that I teach that all around the world. I carry it with me all around the world to remind people that when life hits you, and, and it does, there are still two stories that you can tell. You could tell the story of your life in upheaval. You could tell the story in you, of your life falling apart. And you could tell the story that upheaval creates because the reason why people lose resilience, the loss of resilience is about the loss of memory. And what, is, is, what it is that you fail to remember is who you was before and who you can be in spite, who you still actually are in spite. But the upheaval, the upheaval isn't allowing you to see it. The upheaval isn't allowing you to see your excellence. It's not allowing you to see your capacity. It's not allowing you to realize the depth of your love or the, the depth of how far you still got to go. It's not making you understand that there are still subterranean levels to <laughs> for you to still mine within yourself. There are so many more levels for you to rise. What pressure does, it robs you of that memory. And that's what COVID is doing to everyone. Lockdown is doing that to everybody. It's robbing them, it's robbing them of the memory of who they were before the pressure hit who they actually are in spite of all the pressure. You two can tell two different stories. But the important thing is that you remember. Because in remembering what memory is, memory becomes now our North Star to guide us back to not only who we are, but why we are. Why we are. What it is that makes us who we are. 
why it is we're loved in the way that we're loved, what it means to be who you are, what it means to actually be where you are, and what it is you should be actually learning about yourself so that when you move from where you are, you move with just greater groundedness, just greater groundedness. So, in the midst of all of this that's taking place, in the midst of loss, in the midst of upheaval, there are still two stories you can tell. The story of the upheaval and the sense of loss, or you can actually tell the story. You can tell the story of the growth, regardless. You can tell the story of the excellence in spite of. Like Dee said to me, just tell the story that counts.